Hey, it's Sebastian Maniak here, and welcome to this introduction guide of getting started with Terraform to manage FortiGate devices like policies, rules. Um, this is really a quick guide that is just going to help you to understand Terraform and also leverage uh, Terraform to automate and manage specific firewall rules. So really, why Terraform? <clears throat> Um, Terraform is an open source infrastructure it's called tool development or developed by HashiCorp. It allows you to define, provision, manage infrastructure across various clouds and services using a declarative configuration language known as HCL or HashiCorp language itself. The reasons you want to use FortiGate is really to automate uh, provide consistency, have version control to track changes over time, scalability, easier to manage configurations in really complex environments, uh, and also mimicking specific environments, dev, prod, UAT, so it looks the same, and be more efficient, rapidly deploy and update configurations without really manual interventions. And for us to really get started, what we need is some prerequisites. One, we need Terraform installed, pretty super simple. Just hit up terraform.com or developer.terraform.com um, and you can understand how to install that on your Mac or PC. Um, with Mac, you can just use brew, uh, brew install um, Terraform or with uh, Windows, you can use chocolate packaging or wget uh, or Windows wget packaging itself. So once you have Terraform installed, we need a FortiGate device. So in this demo, I'm just going to play with my FortiGate that's installed in my home environment. And when we need to generate an API key, this API key is how we're going to, how Terraform is going to be able to talk to the actual um, device. So let's jump into our demo first. First thing, we're going to log into our FortiGate device. And the first thing we need to do is create a admin profile. So we have an admin profile. I just called it REST API. For this lab, I'm allowing all access. Um, in production, you want to limit this to understand what is actually going to be used for. Once we have that profile created, then we create a new user, a REST API admin user. That's what we want to create. And inside here, if we go edit, we're going to get an API key. Uh, and this API key is what we're going to use to authenticate Terraform to be able to talk to um, the FortiGate device itself. <clears throat> so in this demo, if we take a look at our VS Code, it's pretty straightforward. The first thing we need to do when we're, start, we're starting to write HCL language is um, get the provider. So a provider is where... A provider for the FortiGate device is really just Fortinet Dev, FortiOS. Um, if you go to the Terraform or registry.terraform.io site, you can see all the provider and all the examples and explanations on how you can manage this device itself. Um, first, we start with how to use a provider. So we grab the Terraform provider that's required that it's going to pull when we do the first Terraform init config, so initialize Terraform. And in here, we need to specify the host name token for this device itself. As you can see, there's a lot of different uh, options and a lot of different ways to, um, or a lot of different system settings we can configure on the FortiGate device. Uh, and not only FortiGate, we have the Forti Manager uh, where we can definitely do the same type of configuration on a more global scale itself. So VPN, address groups, um, all the examples are really much there. You can really take a look at it um, and see what needs to be done to build this config. And HCL is a very simple language. So once you start building out your first uh, configuration file, you'll see how easy it can be in the future. <clears throat> So basically we have a simple config file. We have our provider, then we have the provider we're gonna to connect to. So we're gonna to connect to my 40 OS device. I'm providing my IP address of the device and that token that was generated. I already pasted it in here. 
And the first thing we're going to do is literally we're just going to create an address group. We want to use Terraform to manage all our address groups, all our IP addresses in this instance. So we're going to create an address group called DMZ subnet with this specific subnet. And we're going to create that DMZ subnet group. So in our folder, we have Terra Fortigate 101. We just have that main file. Once you move forward and we'll get through our exercises um, in the 201, 301 different uh, series of this uh, um, channel that I'm going to provide, we're going to build upon this configuration. So really the first thing we want to do uh, once we're in that folder is do Terraform init or Terraform initiate itself. This goes heads and downloads this provider and puts it into our folder. So this initiates Terraform. So we're finding the provider, um, installs the provider itself. Um, then it also just tells us if it's successful. It also tells us that everything is um, pretty good in here. And what we have next is now we wanted to Terraform plan. So we, in our folder, we have our Terraform provider installed. And then now what we want to do is do a Terraform plan. Terraform plan is really just validating our work. So I execute a Terraform plan. If we scroll up to the top and it says pretty straightforward. Hey, the following Terraform will perform the following actions. It's going to create this address group resource with all these parameters, the firewall address group name, and apply the member to this parameter. And here's the member. So if we're ready, we can now hit Terraform apply. And now this time it's gonna ask you, hey, do you want to perform these actions? And I'm going to say yes. Before I say yes, we take a quick look here. Um, it automatically created a state file for us or uh, an empty file right now because we haven't applied the configs. This is our source of truth. This is a um, declarative way of us configuring the config that whatever the state file is, that is a source of truth for our configuration. So we can have versions of the state file. We can go back in time to see what was configured before. Um, and as we apply new changes, it creates a new version of that state file and updates that state file for us itself. Later on, we'll show you how the versioning system works in things like Terraform Cloud um, <clears throat> for us so you can see different states. So we're going to click on yes. Yes, I want to apply these changes. Oops. Yes, I want to apply these changes. And boom, super quick. Um, we see the output message of all the actions that were performed, just like in our apply. Everything was added. So an add, there's a subtract um, as what's going to happen in those configurations. And the firewall address was created and completed. So now we have a subnet ID. And as that was completed, this Terraform state file was automatically updated. That shows us the version that we're using. So we're in version four um, of the state file, Terraform version, serial number. Um, we have all the information about what was configured in a nice JSON format or a Terraform state format of the actual deployment. So when we log into our 40 uh, net device, let's log back in. And now when we go to our addresses, <clears throat> we'll see that DMZ subnet that we created was applied. What happens if we made an error? What happens if we want to update this? And we want, what happens if we want to make changes to it? It's pretty simple. What we can do is we go back to our config file and we say, you know what? This uh, IP address is wrong. This should be 10.10.1. Should start with 10.10.1 and we'll make a put a wildcard in here. 
and the sum that's going to end with 255. So we made a couple mistakes or we want to alter it and change the configuration. So what we do is we save the file. Once again, if we make this a little bigger, Let's just do Terraform plan. So now if we scroll up and we apply the Terraform plan, now we see that we're going to get some update in place. So some of our resources that we've built, so like this address, coordinate address, it's going to get updated. So we're literally just going to be updating the subnet for this device, adding the IP, adding that uh, wildcard subnet itself, and then we're going to make an update to this resource address group to re-update um, that address into this address group. So let's go ahead and click on Terraform Apply. We're going to click on Yes. <clears throat> and boom, done. Um, so now we have our Terraform state was updated. Um, we can see that we have the new subnet uh, IP is here that we've updated in our Terraform code. We can also see we have a backup of our previous change. So we have our previous config here. We have a backup file um, of what was done before. And when we log back into our FortiGate device and go to DMZ subnets, we see that the subnet has been changed itself. So really in conclusion, this is just a, a simple demo, uh, a simple entry for anybody to be able to go ahead and start using Terraform to provision policies, rules, address groups, and then from there, you can move on to um, deploying FortiGate devices, be it in the cloud or on-prem, using Terraform. So then you can destroy, rebuild them, update them, whatever you want, and having everything deployed in this infrastructure as code way. This will really benefit you in the future to do audits, um, configuration assessments, migrating from one platform to another, <clears throat> um, and provides really kind of consistency and tracking of changes over time on these devices. I hope you like this quick little demo of what we did. Um, please like, subscribe. We're going to be focusing more on FortiGates uh, coming up by building out more policies and deploying some of these firewalls in some of the cloud and also applying more uh, Git methods to it and more orchestration through um, GitHub Actions, ServiceNow, Terraform Cloud, etc. Thank you.